I'm excited to have on this segment uh, two individuals who represent two organizations that really have been instrumental in changing uh, not only the physical landscape of the city of Worcester uh, and the organizations kind of uh, affiliated with you, but also um, kind of the mindset and the perception in which people view the community. So I want to welcome Aaron Williams, who's the Cultural Development Officer for the City of Worcester. Welcome, Aaron. Thank you, Tim. And Lisa Drexage, who is the Project Manager at the Worcester Business Development Corporation. Thank you. So for, for our viewers, I think it just would be helpful as we kind of get into the discussion is to give, for our viewers who are not familiar with the Cultural Coalition or familiar with the WBDC, maybe we could just have you tell them a little bit about the organization and the, and the coalition and kind of how it got started and uh, then we can get into what it's done. Certainly, and I think you might remember the very beginnings of the I coalition, do. Tim. You were instrumental in making that happen. It is a partnership between the City of Worcester and cultural organizations in the city and it started all the way back in 1999 when individual organizations were knocking on the city manager's door and they were encouraged to go and organize amongst themselves in the same way that the biotech community had mm -hmm. and to develop a common agenda and to come back and be placed in city hall was the agreement that the coalition members put forth, they would pay the salary of the cultural development officer and rather than having it separate as an arts and cultural division, if you will, it would be a part of the economic development initiative. So it would play a role in when the city was thinking about arts and culture for streetscape, for arts education, for what kind of programming we had in the downtown. Right. And it's grown over the years with the things like WooCard, right, right. which many folks had participated in. It uh, stimulated with the city the um, wayfinding system, mm -hmm. which we're looking to install finally right, this upcoming right. year. And we do things like catalyzing events. Right. The coalition is really about doing what individual organizations can't do alone or the city can't do alone and to bring life to the city. And really in many ways uh, kind of ahead of its time, I was the city council at the time, but had been involved and led First Night Worcester and um, just working with a lot of the different arts and cultural organizations. It, you know, in and this, each, and every, each and every organization in and of themselves brings people into the city or activates people locally, but um, collectively marketing that, uh, those cultural organizations, the, the things that they do, the uh, active arts, visual arts, uh, you know, marketing that asset it was a big, big plan. And really today they use the word creative economy. Uh, the organizations that are part of the Cultural Coalition are the creative economy. That's right. In partnership with the city and even with the city council, we travel around the country. We're the only institution of its kind where there's this kind of partnership between the city and a collective of arts organizations. And you hit the nail on the head, collective impact, creative catalyst. That's really what the coalition strives for. And as for. we look at it for, from 1999, Worcester now from the outside is, is being seen more and more or is seen as a destination place for the arts and, and, and all of their different kind of uh, ways, our museums, uh, it's seen as a, increasingly as a cultural destination place. That's right, and that builds on the collaborative spirit of the city. From the time you were city councilor to mayor, Worcester has always been about working together, be it our leaders in the business community, in the arts community, in the education community. We find that way because we are a small enough city to be able to pick up the phone and say, how can we make this happen? Right, right. Uh, WBDC, every day, almost every project that they're involved in, mm -hmm. it's not an easy project. If it was an easy project, the private sector on its mm -hmm. own would likely come in and invest uh, and then find a return. Mm -hmm. the WBDC takes complex projects and Lisa why don't you talk about what the, the you know the WBDC and kind of what you're involved with there. Sure, sure. So for those who don't know the WBDC was founded in 1965 by a group of local businessmen at the mm -hmm. time who thought that economic development was a priority for the city. Um, we've started off with developing industrial parks. Um, we've sort of now translated that experience into downtown development. Um, the latest trends in economic development is that downtown is where people want to be. So that's where we decided to focus our efforts by purchasing 20 Franklin Street in 2011 from the New York Times Company. Um, since that time, we've successfully redeveloped it to house Quinsigamon Community College's new downtown campus, um, as well as a number of startup companies. Um, and now the latest addition will be the Luteria, 
um, and we're very excited to be partnering with the Worcester Cultural Coalition to make that happen. And the uh, you know, WBDC, for maybe some of our viewers who are new to the community or haven't been following closely, but in addition to the 20 Franklin Street, uh, Gateway Park, a, yep. a, a, an initiative that the WBDC engaged in partnership with WPI in cleaning up contaminated mm -hmm. brownfield sites. Uh, for regional impact, Centec Park, an industrial park yep. there, um, and, um, and uh, in addition to the theater district, which we're going to get into a little bit, uh, <coughs> instrumental in using the WBDC's brownfields uh, expertise, mm -hmm. cleaning up contaminated sites. Mm -hmm. With two new hockey rinks as we speak, we've got iron yeah. going up and two new rinks with uh, 40,000 square feet of retail approximately uh, coming online in 2017 as well, affiliated with the Rista Railers. Yeah. It's very exciting stuff. Um, we're very excited about all the density that that will create. Mm -hmm. um, this density will then attract more private development, um, which we definitely think is positive for the city of Worcester. Um, and we're continuing to explore creative opportunities for us to get involved to really promote the city of Worcester, increase the tax base, and increase the number of jobs for the city and jobs. the region. Jobs, and density helps do that. And density means when people you know, uh, come into the downtown, they're living, working, mm -hmm. uh, they're looking for places to go, restaurants, experiences, places. So one of the projects that uh, uh, at 20 Franklin Street and related to that, uh, the old telegram building, is this Wuteria. Now who wants to start off what Wuteria is about? <laughs> well, we'll go back a few years when okay. we uh, asked Bay State Bank if we might take an empty storefront and activate it so that there would be some creative activity that complemented the Out to Lunch concert series that takes place every Thursday on the Common in the summertime. And that was just such a great experience. It really blossomed and brought a lot of new artists who aren't Bay affiliated. State Savings Bank, a great chamber member business. Mm -hmm. Very good. And Diane Jampa really yeah. championed having us be in there and allowing us to put our Worcester windows. She gets things done, doesn't she? She definitely gets <laughs> it, and always with a smile, yeah. you have to say that. <laughs> um, so that was so successful, and they thought that was uh, really catalyzing that space to be rented. It didn't quite work out, and the WBDC had purchased 20 Franklin. They had partnered with us on the Bay State Bank project, mm -hmm. and we uh, discussed moving this permanent pop-up into the space. And so for the past two years, we've been running year-round uh, pop-up experiences. And what a pop-up is, is it's a creative activity. It might be a workshop in painting murals, right. or a poetry reading, or we had people give tango lessons, belly dancing lessons. I was there lessons. watching, a, I think it was the whole mural fest, there was some kind of that's right. A mural kind of competition going on We had inside. a mural competition <laughs> right inside as well. Um, we bring in the African Community Education Center to do drumming along with Technocopia that's doing right. new maker space. And there when we opened up, you had the old and the new working together, oldest traditions of drumming and newest technologies emerging. So. And Lisa, we're going to just take a minute before sure. we go to our, into our next segment and we'll, we'll follow up with you. But you know, the, the, the old telegram building, not only were the reporters there, but printers are a very kind of complicated building, a lot of space you, yeah. you're trying to find mixed uses for. Absolutely. Um, providing a mixed use facility for the neighborhood will really create mm -hmm. that 18 hour experience that we're hoping to transform the neighborhood into. Um, right now, we're excited to be expanding with a new cafe. Um, we do have some additional space available. If anybody is interested in coming downtown, we'd be happy to talk to you. Um, but definitely the Luteria is an important piece of the puzzle, um, an important piece of the master plan that we're looking to fulfill. 